At last year's attack on the U.S. Capitol, the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History has and continues to collect artifacts from that fateful day, from rally signs to a photographer's protective vest, even whips used by the rioters. This collection will ensure that future generations understand how deadly that day was, that day that defamed our democracy, and how it will impact our history and our lives forever. Let us use history to inspire us to push a country forward, to help us believe that all things are possible. From his prestigious perch within the storied Smithsonian Castle, you're listening to a promise Dr. Lonnie Bunch made to himself at the age of 10. When you were a little boy and you wanted to visit museums, your dad would only drop you off in front of the Smithsonian. Why? He pulled into Washington, stopped in front of the Smithsonian, and said, here is a place where you can understand yourself, your history, and not have to worry about the burden of the color of your skin. So it is unbelievably humbling to be a part of it. Um, and it's a tad frightening to be in charge of it. In charge of the world's largest network of museums, 19 of them, plus 21 libraries and the National Zoo. Bunch is also the Smithsonian's first African-American secretary. The death of George Floyd, Black Lives Matter, the protests, the insurrection, do you feel added pressure because you are an African-American and you have this duty to portray history at the highest level? Well, to be honest, as a black man, I've always had the pressure, regardless of what job I was in. So what I think, as an African-American, what's really been the key to my sort of understanding myself in history is how does a country find fairness? How does a country make sure that freedom really rings for everybody? The Smithsonian doesn't have a political agenda. Our goal is to make a country better. And to find hope through history. Welcome to the bowels of the basement in the National Museum of American History. They're cataloged, they're photographed, if they're fragile, they're mended. For the first time, you're getting an exclusive look at how our past year of a pandemic <laughs> and racial reckoning will be remembered here in the Smithsonian forever. That's the very first Pfizer vaccine. The first Pfizer vaccine given in the United States. This is an unprecedented sneak peek into history preserved, not just for us. Because they felt so passionately about a cause. But also this museum's first female director, Dr. Anthea Hartig. We have to collect to remember. Reminding us all that our future lies in preserving the past. Am I next? thanks to curators who secure these collections. Everything we see here, it was empty. Frank Blazich is with the Smithsonian's uh, rapid response teams, collectors dispatched during historical crises, like this infamous day in our nation's capital. There was trash kind of scattered everywhere. but Frank took us back to where he saved those signs you just saw now archived within the Smithsonian. Since I thankfully had a multi-tool in my vehicle and was able to break the rivet off and I had to kick the sign physically free of the post to take it back into the Smithsonian for our collection. And where he tore through the trash after the Capitol Hill insurrection. I found two American flags. I found a file folder of copies of the Battle Hymn of the Republic an abolitionist song composed not more than a mile from here. And I even found a small uh, personal defense hand whip or hand baton that had been buried down in the bottom of a trash can. One man's trash is another man's treasure. In this case, America's treasure found in the trash. Collecting today for tomorrow. How do you want to see the Smithsonian make an impact on social justice? The question really is, is it a moment where we take advantage of where we are? Is it a moment where, um, you know, in the midst of the trial around the murder of George Floyd, do we say, what kind of country do we want to be? What does fairness really mean in the 21st century? As many people have said, it's a struggle for the soul of America. A struggle, Secretary Bunch says, will be protected and preserved. I come out of a community that said, 
you will stand on the shoulders of others and you will open the door for others and you will be better. So what I want is the country to believe that, is to recognize that when America comes together, it's amazing what we can accomplish. While living up to that promise he made to himself decades ago. And to demand a country live up to its stated ideals. Joining us now is the director of the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History, Anthea Hartig, and also Smithsonian curator and history scholar, Frank Blazich, who were both in the piece that you just saw. Anthea and Frank, so great to see you both again. Anthea, let's start with you. You know, the Smithsonian is undoubtedly the most prestigious historical complex that we know of. Why does remembering the insurrection and what happened today a year ago and having an exhibit in your museum so important for history? Well, thank you so much. It's great to see you again on this auspicious and ever complicated day. And thank you for your coverage and all that you have brought to us so far this past year. Um, I like to think that democracy and history are not necessarily always nouns, right? That they're verbs. We animate them, we explore them, we interrogate them. And in essence, we need to live them. So thinking about the nation's flagship history museum, which we're honored uh, in which to work, and the need to preserve, right? The need to remember, the need to collect as broadly as we can so that we don't forget that we remember how fragile life and our democracy is unless we ourselves contribute to upholding it. So well said. And Frank, you know, you're part of the Smithsonian's rapid response team, collectors that are dispatched during uh, historical crises. How did you know what to grab and preserve that day a year ago? First off, good afternoon, Karen. Thanks for chatting again. Really, <laughs> how things unfolded on the morning of the 7th, it was kind of a to use a phrase, a grab and move operation. Uh, being by myself out there, that wasn't a problem, but the cleaning crews were active and they were already picking up items left and right. So really what I just tried to focus on was anything that clearly was connected to the events. And of course, there's lots of detritus on the National Mall from various events, but you could see the political signs stood out very clearly. Uh, other paraphernalia was clearly related on the grass. Uh, digging in the trash, I, tried to grab what I could, <laughs> that made sense. But invariably, the, the main focus was save it all now because we'll allow for time, the passage of time, to take effect so we can better interpret the objects we have and how we best want to use them and incorporate them into the museum's collections. Yeah, it really fascinated me how you just went everywhere and anywhere uh, to, to collect everything that we're going to see soon all put together in the Smithsonian. And Anthea, when I met all of you there, you know, you talked about your mantra today for tomorrow. How does having these physical artifacts help teach future generations uh, about this day a year ago? Well, absolutely. The long history of our political history collecting, which dates from the very first elections in the late 18th century, continues to this day. And then, as you noted, we have a great tradition of what we call, you know, rapid response field collecting. And so Dr. Claire Jerry, who has been leading this for us, I actually pulled her from the field in Iowa um, with, uh, with our colleagues who were documenting the 2020 election, because we've done that now every year. We've also been collecting on the National Mall. You think about it, we have a front row seat into all of the peaceful protests. So the kind of the collision of, of January 6th was such that all of that we've known from our history, um, our historical and political collecting, all that we understand about our field collecting came into a really complicated and clashing moment. And so we've collected much more broadly um, since the, the morning of the 7th when Frank so bravely went out we have about 80 objects that we've accessioned and we're continuing to explore dozens and dozens more. Some of the most complicated and the most fraught, especially along the lines of violence and racialized violence, especially if you think of setting up, you know, um, uh, nooses and, and uh, hanging sites outside the Capitol um, mm. are, are not, you know, are not, we're not able to um, collect yet, but there's a significant number of objects that are being used as evidence by our federal law enforcement partners. So this is very much an ongoing, very active 
effort that we will first hopefully release online, uh, making our collections as accessible as possible, and then you know take the time and the care that we need uh, to best interpret and and share these artifacts. Um, as Lonnie, you know, so eloquently said, as Secretary Bunch so eloquently said, in order to create the fullness of and achieve the full promise of the nation's founding aspirations. Yes, indeed. And Frank, finally, how was the insurrection that day different from any other day of collecting for you? Well, suffice to say, at my time at the Smithsonian, it was really one of the first major opportunities I've had to do rapid response collecting. But what really stood out in my mind was this was the first time in the, the history of our capital that the building was not a attacked by a, a small group of people, but a mass, not necessarily of an invading enemy army, such as the British, but rather the American people themselves uh, mm. were confronting their seat of government, the seat of our constitutional power, uh, and voicing, uh, voicing and physically exerting their opinions on and displeasure with matters. So to collect the materials, what stood in the back of my mind was I have to save this, I have to save everything I can and I have to move as quickly as I can to provide the evidence for the historical record that this did occur, that these events are real, that the sentiments expressed on these objects are a window into a mindset when the country really was trying to tear itself apart. And thankfully, as we saw with the Electoral College, we did not. And we had a peaceful transfer of power in this country. And so a lot of that was running through my mind on the morning of January 7th and, quite frankly, on the afternoon of January 6th. Well, I'll tell you what, Frank and, and Thea, I can't wait to bring our entire team to the Smithsonian so everybody can see the entire exhibit uh, for themselves when it's up and running. I so appreciate you both what you do. I have so much respect for the two of you. Thank you for today. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. You bet. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.